In the spring of 1863, the United States stood on the brink of collapse from within. Two years of devastating civil war had claimed more than a quarter of a million lives, and with no end in sight, the nation was truly a house divided. In response to the wounds that infected the very heart of America, Abraham Lincoln issued a presidential proclamation. Today, more than 150 years later, the humility, hope, and spiritual insight of Lincoln's words still speak to us with extraordinary relevance. Whereas it is the duty of nations, as well as of men, to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, and yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, to recognize the sublime truth as announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history, that those nations only are blessed, whose God is the Lord. Since we know that by His divine law, nations, like individuals, are subjected to punishments in this world, may we not justly fear that the awful calamity of civil war, which now desolates the land, may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our sins, to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all of these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It behooves us, then, to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. Now, therefore, in compliance with the request and fully concurring in the views of the Senate, I do by this my proclamation designate and set apart Thursday, the 30th day of April, 1863, as a day of national humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And I do hereby request all the people to abstain on that day from their ordinary secular pursuits and to unite at their several places of public worship and their respective homes in keeping the day holy to the Lord and devoted to the humble discharge of the religious duties proper to that solemn occasion. All this being done in sincerity and truth, let us then rest humbly in the hope that the united cry of the nation will be heard on high and answered with blessings, no less than the pardon of our national sins and the restoration of our now divided and suffering country to its former condition of unity and peace.